Hey calculus rock stars, in this video we're going to be talking about derivatives of inverse functions. Here's the big question. If g of x equals f inverse of x, how can we find g prime of b, where b is an x value in the domain of the g function? Let's start by reviewing some properties of inverse functions. So if I have a function f here, and g is the inverse, note that they reflect over the line y equals x. That means if the point AB is on the graph of F, then the point BA is on the graph of G. I'm gonna add two other points to my graphs here. The point CD on the F function, which would become the point DC on the G function. Now I'm gonna find the slope of the secant lines through each of the points on F and G respectively. The slope of the secant line on the G graph is C minus A over D minus B. The slope of the secant line on the F graph is D minus B over C minus A. Note that these are reciprocal slopes. We can apply the same logic when finding slopes of tangent lines. If I want the slope of the tangent at the point B on the G graph, then that would be the reciprocal of the slope at the point A on the F graph. Well, what's the slope at the point A? That's just F prime of A. So in other words, g prime of b equals 1 over f prime of a. But there's something curious to observe here. g of b equals a. That means g prime of b equals 1 over f prime of g of b. Take a moment and convince yourself of this by reviewing the diagram and the equations. So now we can summarize this. If g of x is the inverse of f of x, then g prime of b equals one over f prime of g of b. Remember what this is saying. We want the slope of the tangent at b on the g graph, and we don't know what this is, but we do know that it's the reciprocal of the slope at a on the f graph. So we're gonna use that fact to help us find g prime of b. Let's do an example problem. Suppose g of x equals f inverse of x, and f of x equals x cubed plus 3x. Find g prime of 4. The first thing to note is that the point 4 comma something is on the g graph. That means the point something comma 4 is on the f graph. So to find the missing number here, we're going to set f of x equal to 4 and solve for x. In this particular example, you might be able to see that x equals 1. But you can always solve an equation like this algebraically if possible, or graphically with a calculator. For example, here we have a graph of f of x and y equals 4, which would help us determine that they intersect at the point 1, 4. Now we have the coordinates. The point 4, 1 is on the graph of g, and the point 1, 4 is on the graph of f. Now we can use our derivative of inverse formula to find g prime of 4. And this gives us 1 over f prime of g of 4. But g of 4 equals 1. So g prime of 4 equals 1 over f prime of 1. Now we need to find f prime of x. From the power rule, we get 3x squared plus 3. And f prime of 1 equals 6. Now we can substitute this back into our equation, and we have g prime of 4 equals 1 sixth. And that's what we were looking for. We got it! Let's do another example. Suppose that g of x is the inverse of f of x. Find g prime of 6. Note that we're not given any other information about g and f except what's in the table below. So let's start out by writing the formula for the derivative of an inverse function at a point. g prime of b equals 1 over f prime of g of b. In this case, b equals 6. So g prime of 6 equals 1 over f prime of g of 6. Now we got to figure out what g of 6 is. Well, f of 2 equals 6 from the table. So that means g of 6 equals 2. Now we can swap that in. g prime of 6 is then 1 over f prime of 2. But f prime of 2 is 1 third from the table. That means g prime of 6 is 1 over 1 third, which equals 3. And we got it, we're done. So let's summarize what we've learned. When you're asked to find the derivative of an inverse at a point, the first thing you wanna do is find the x and y coordinate of the point on the function and on the inverse. Use inverse properties to help you with this. If the point AB is on the function, then the point BA is on the inverse. Then we can use our derivative of inverse formula to help us solve. g prime of b equals 1 over f prime of g of b. 
Now, there's no magic in the letters. You might be faced with problems that have different function names. No problem. Simply swap in the correct function names. For example, if h of x is the inverse of f of x, then h prime of b equals 1 over f prime of h of b. It's the same pattern. In any case, this is a calculus topic that might take some getting used to. Just keep practicing. And that's how you rock calculus!